Okay, so in part three, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the CSS to style our web app so that it starts to look like an actual application instead of just a list of buttons. So by the end of the project, it should look something like this. So to go ahead and get started, make sure that you have your text editor open. For me, that's gonna be Atom. For you, it could be Atom. It might be um, Programmer's Notepad. I have my index file open, but I'm also gonna go ahead and open my CSS file, which is the file that we're gonna be writing all of our um, styles in. And when you open this file, you should see that it's blank, but we have linked it to our style sheet, so it should pop up. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your uh, web app is actually open in the browser, so just double click on that file. You can do that by making sure that you go to the right project folder and double click. Great, all right. So now that I'm ready to go, the first thing that we wanna do is we should give our background um, or our app a background color and we should um, start to style some text. So to do that, because in our index file we have the body tags wrapped around all of the different HTML tags and content for our website, we can use the, um, we can style the body tag to do a couple of things. Give a background color, if we want to apply some general rules to all of the font, we can do it that way too. So remember for CSS you use the um, selector so for the body tag, it's just going to be body, curly brackets. And for the background, you can say background. And then you're going to use the color that you chose in your project plan. If you used an image, you can also do that. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. But for me, I'm going to show you first a color. So 42, 42, 42, semicolon. Save that. Refresh your page. And now I have a back or a gray background. If you wanted to do a image, you want to download your image, you'll say background URL, um, parentheses, quotes, and then the link to your image. For me, what I did was inside of my project folder, I downloaded and put a background picture and I named it background and the file extension is JPEG. So the link would just be background.jpg semicolon and because I wrote this line after my color the rule that should apply is the background image. If I refresh I can see that now I have this different looking background that's an image. I want to go ahead and use the color so I'm going to delete that. Now if we go ahead and refresh the page it's kind of hard to read the black text on here so I'm going to go ahead and make all of the text white so I can do that saying color white save that refresh I can see all of my color is white. If I wanted to change other things, like make all of the font sans serif, I can do that by saying font family sans serif. Save that, refresh. That changed all my fonts. And then if I want to center everything, I can also do that by saying text align center. And it's all centered. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to use our fancy font that we picked for our um, in our project plan for the name of our app. So I want photo editor to be in a font that I picked called Railway. So what I'm going to do, the um, photo editor name is inside of an H1 tag. So I'm going to style the H1, and I'm going to go to Google Fonts. This was the link that I put in my HTML, and this is what I used to use this font in my CSS. So I'm gonna copy this, Control C, and put it inside of the curly brackets for my H1 tag. Save that. Come back over here, refresh. And I can see that my font for the name just changed. I think that the font for the name should be a little bit bigger, so I'm also gonna adjust things like the font size. I'm gonna try 60 PX refresh and you can keep making adjustments until you find something that you like. Um, I'm going to change the margin too. So 
I'm going to set it to 10px and see what that looks like. And that reduced the space between the top and the bottom. So make sure that you find something that you like. Oops, let me delete those extra semicolons. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is I think that the labels are a little bit too big for the text for the label. So I'm going to actually go ahead and change those. And if we look on our index.html file, we can see that there's a p tag around there, the label. So I can just go ahead and style the p tag and change the font size by saying p font size. And I'm going to change it to be 14px. Save that, refresh. You can see that it change the size a little bit. All right, that looks good. So find something that you like there. The next thing that we want to do is we actually want to make sure that we can, um, and we can't see what our image will look like because it's not loaded in here. So we need to make sure that we know how to lay out the image next to our buttons and um, that kind of thing. And we want to make that part responsive based on how big our app is. That's why we use these different divs. So we have all of the tools and the image inside a div called the editor. So we're going to style that and arrange it so that the tools div is located next to our image. The first thing we should do though is we should actually put a, a filler image in to our index.html file so that way we can see what the image will actually look like. So go to Google, find an image and download it. I've already downloaded an image that I actually want to use and I'll show you it in my folder. So the image I'm going to use is this one. It's named puppy.jpg. So when I'm putting the link in my index file down here at the bottom, I go to SRC. I'm going to name it puppy.jpg. I'm going to save that. I'm going to refresh the page and I can see that my puppy picture is in here. However, it's super big. So we will resize this. The first thing we want to do though is we're going to style the editor um, div. So to style a class, we're going to say dot editor curly brackets. Let's set the width to be 95% of the entire web page. And we can set height to be auto. Let's refresh that doesn't look like a big change. It did shift things over them. The next thing we want to do is we're going to make it so that the toolbar floats to the left and then we'll resize the image. So to style the toolbar, we use the class syntax dot tools. We're going to say float. Uh, I'm going to show you left, but you can also float this right if you want, if you want your toolbar on the right. I'm going to set the width for the tools to be 30% so that it takes up 30% of this div. And then I'm gonna set the text align for this div to be the left so that it lines up nice and neat. Refresh. All right, so our toolbar is off to the side. If I resize it, we can see that the buttons will readjust. That's great. But our image is still really big. So remember that our image had a class of img, so we can style the image based on that class, so .img. Let's change the width to be something smaller. Let's try 65%. All right, and now it will fit next to our toolbar. Great. Let's do a couple of other things. Let's adjust the padding on the left to be 10px and the height we can say auto all right refresh the page it's looking good it moved it over a little bit provided some space the next thing we can do is we can style our buttons so we probably want to give our buttons a background color maybe change the font a little bit add a border around it that it looks nice. There's a lot of different things that you can do. And inside the checklist, there are a lot of links that if you're not sure about how to do something, you can read about some of your options on these extra resource links. So to style a button, we can actually just use the button tag and it should style all the buttons the same, which will make the app look more consistent. I'm gonna change the color of the font to be white. And if I save, oops, skip. control S to save, control R to refresh. 
the font did change to white, but now we can't read it, so I'm going to give it a background color. So I'm going to say background, pound 4, 5, A, D, A, 8. Refresh. It's got this cool teal colored background. I'm going to change the font to match the other fonts. So I'm going to say sans serif. All right, that's looking better. And I'm going to give it a border radius. The border radius will let you have slightly rounded edges. So I'm going to set it to 10% first. And it did make it slightly more rounded. I also am going to style the border itself so that the border looks a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to say border 2px. That's how wide the border is going to be. Space. I want it to be a solid border. And I want it to be white. Okay, that's looking good, but the buttons are kind of touching or right up against each other. So I'm going to say padding. This will give a little bit of space between the words inside the button. 5px. All right, the buttons are a little bigger. That looks better. And then margin on the top, margin-top of 5px or 2px. Let's try that. Okay. That looks a little bit better. Good. Now you'll notice that this choose file still doesn't look quite right. We're going to style that input as well. So to style that input so that it looks a little bit more consistent, we can say type, input type is file, because we have these sliders. We don't want all the inputs to look the same. Curly brackets. We're going to say the color for the text will be white. Okay, we will say, we'll give it a background color, and this will be for the entire input of our button background color to make it look more cohesive. I'm going to say font family sans serif. Let's refresh. Okay, so now we have a background behind this. Let's also give it a border radius of two percent okay slightly rounded we're gonna also give this a border uh, the same border that we gave our buttons okay that's looking better but I want a little bit more padding around it so I'm gonna say padding 10 px okay that's looking a little bit better okay and then I'm going to say margin on the top of 5px. Um, so there's lots of different things that you can do that you can still adjust until you find something that you like um, for your photo editor. And so use the different resources to make this look the way that you want it to look. Don't forget to go back in and add comments. For CSS, a comment is going to be forward slash star write your comment star slash have fun